Welcome back for another solo mining episode. I'm going to be taking the porpoise as well as the Mackinac here out and do probably a good hour, I would say, of mining. We'll try to use the mining drones in conjunction with the Mackinac who will be using type 2 or modulated strip miner. Give you a good idea what we're running here. Just simples, very basic. And, um, just try to get a lot of uh, ore stockpiled today. So we're going to get these guys undocked and get them out to location and get everything set up and start mining. Try to adjust all my stuff. Just going to fleet mine everybody out to location I already have a little bit of ore in the porpoise just from doing a little bit of mining before recording this video my goal is to try to run this video uncut so everybody who is curious about yield at the level my skills are at we'll get a good indication over the course of 60 minutes but really if you have any concerns about your mining yield based on your skills or anything like that it's almost always better to take a fit simulate it and look at the numbers relative to how all your stuff is kind of set up All right, just like normal, let's get every not targeted. Want to get this guy to follow. Now I'm not going to be dumping probably into the porpoise just to make things easy. We'll just compress on ship but we'll go ahead and get a lot of stuff targeted up. I do kind of just want to work on what's kind of in the vicinity here. Let's get to all that he's running. So we'll go ahead and get everything here. Run. Get burst turned on. You want to turn on your industrial core first, just so the first initial bursts are actually boosted from it. I'll go and get all this stuff compressed from before, which I was just doing just regular drone mining. So she's already got like 2.3 as we start. That brought this tune down to about 85 seconds since we have a stellar observatory in system that really helps benefit everything. Also, my porpoise pilot is running a mine link implant which allows me to have a little bit better boost as well. All right, let's go get the mining drones out. Go ahead and get pretty much the same rocks targeted up, but I think for simplicity's sake, we're just going to have the drones work on one rock at a time. And this will just give us a little bit of extra income. Or yield, rather. Spent the better half of this morning working on just logistics stuff, moving things around. Um, we got rid of some things, like this tune. My command tune had a Mackinac of her own, and then also a Procure. But we don't really, I'm not really looking to use that. In the future, she's going to pretty much strictly be the command ship since we have three other alts that can run exhumers and do things on the fly. So I like to kind of simplify my assets. I don't necessarily like just stockpiling and, you know, having stuff I don't use on a regular basis. It just kind of keeps everything nice and neat for me. So 
We do have the Orca garaged in Jita for now, and we're in the process of working on her compression skills so that she can get the compressor for moon mining because that is going to be our goal in the next couple of days, if not next week, definitely, to start stockpiling some moon ore and get ready for... We just want moon goo kind of on reserve. All right, now that this tune has some ore, we're going to go ahead and get... I kind of decided to start stacking my compression window, which just makes a little more sense. I like to try to keep things as clean on the interface as possible, but we'll uh, compress when she gets a little bit closer to being full. I would definitely say that it is a... Uh, if we were able to actually fill up the Mackinac with compressed ore, which I don't think we'd be able to with even the entire belt, but I would consider that a good run. But like I said, we're shooting for about an hour on this mining op here. This like micro op as it were. Constantly checking. I do like having at least one exhumer out here, especially if I'm drone mining, because it allows me to use their their uh, drones for fighting the other drone. So I'll probably keep one target open just so that we have. I guess we could actually, with this uh, Mackinac actually now is also running mining drones as well, but it's very very little yield. So I think we're just gonna kinda of keep these uh, hornets out. Just so we don't have to worry about too much. We shouldn't have to worry about targeting or anything unless they go for the orca. Or not the orca, but the porpoise rather. I've been doing a lot of orca mining in the past few days, so I might uh, accidentally call the porpoise an orca. Cause uh, the orca is definitely my daily driver for the most part. This character had a porpoise early on, and we got rid of it. But I decided to get one again, just because it's, you know, really fast and agile at getting around and things like that. Ooh, another one down. We're working on rocks that I was drone mining on before starting this uh, mining op, so a lot of these are going to be sh pretty short. Make sure we kill a rock that we want to make sure we check, because that yeah, was the one the drones were on. We'll put the drones on Scordite. I would say that this setup is probably more accessible to most who are looking to do fleet mining. It's also very, um, it's a really good middle ground, honestly. It's like, it's going to be better than just straight drone mining, and it's also going to be better than just going out with a Mackinac. So, and each ship can get off grid and can maneuver quite well. So this is a, uh, a definitely a good setup that I don't think I've actually done just straight porpoise and Mac combination in the past, which is the main motivation of doing this today, just to give everyone a good idea and hopefully just try to test out this, you know, uncut format. Just a good hour of mining out here. Got about eight other people in local, so nothing really on D-Scan. A lot of, lot of uh, combat sites and things like that being ran, so we'll just kind of keep an eye out on local and on D-Scan, and everything should be pretty okay. Looks like the Mackinac's done about 1.3 million so far. 
And then uh, we haven't compressed over here yet. So the drones have done about three, almost 400,000. So about 1.6. I think we have a lot of scordite here in our close proximity, so we're going to have to, when we start getting the plague, you'll start seeing the numbers really kind of go up. But let's go and get some more targets on the porpoise here. Let's get a survey scan going. this up really nicely. What are we targeting right now? We're targeting concentrated Veltar and condensed Scordite. So these rocks are pretty tiny. It's a it's a big rock day, but we just gotta get through all the stuff we've been drone mining. Get some, get some more stuff targeted up here. But not bad. I mean, if you weren't going after the Scordite initially, you'd probably be about 2 million in 10 minutes. I think we'll do more than 12 million, though, in an hour once uh, we start. We're not going to worry too much about compressing either side until we get kind of space uh, cramped. It'll actually be pretty exciting to... Uh, <clears throat> my plan is to take the Orca out with the two hulks do when we start doing moon mining that will um speed things up quite a bit as far as a high sec ore i think um, a configuration like this um on a, on a good day day-to-day -day operations would be uh is gonna be really beneficial oh drones need to be something to do I'm gonna go ahead and separate all these drones out so that it's not too crazy. Let's see, I can kind of show you the yield that they're getting. They're getting about 250 cubic meters per minute, so times five. So not great, it's just like kind of an added bonus on top of what the max doing. another service can going a lot of stuff is uh I try to look at at least what I'm targeting currently it gives me a good idea of when things are about to drop as far as rocks I don't think we'll have to move actually I think once we um kind of get to the hour mark we'll uh have gotten a lot of what's in range the asteroid is defeated. Okay. get another target up all right we can get these guys separated out here we might have to switch the mac after all the targets are done i might have to switch the mac to like max range just to uh let the Drones kind of keep doing what they're doing. Actually, I think I'm going to go and do that.
clear all the max targets. What is our max range? Our max range is 32. So we'll go about 30k and then work our way down. That way we can let the drones kind of stay active a little bit more. So I expect we'll get quite a bit of this in this area in an hour. We're about one, one fourth the way there. Go ahead and do this compression since we're getting pretty close. All right, sitting at 3.5 in the Mackinac. Another reason I don't, I just want to compress inside the Mackinac because there's plenty of space for it. And also, I just have heavy water kind of hanging out in the fleet hangar as well. So, moving in between, moving or between the Mac and the uh, Porpoise through the fleet hangar won't be really possible right now. Plus, there's really no need until we're, uh, you know, done to just so we can have all the compressed door on the uh, command character. That's really the only benefit. I will be filling up this uh, fuel bay, though, from the fleet hangar just to, uh, get a little bit of space going so when we get to the end of the op we'll have space to kind of move the compressed over as much as I love drone mining having an exhumer out here to really kind of pump up the uh, volume of or we can pull in per minute is really nice as well. Got about six people in local. Nothing too crazy going on on D-Scan. Should be a pretty relaxing little op here. The reason I carry mining or two drones with the Mac is if I'm out doing mining with just the Mac and I'm not boosted or anything, especially in like really high security where there is no rats, then having their extra, I think it's like 68 or so cubic meters each, we can actually look. Like I said, it's just kind of a bonus. So yeah, 68 cubic meters per minute each does a 68 times five. So it's just an added thing I like to do. Not always useful, but in this system we do have to worry about rats, so having uh, not having to worry about sucking in mining drones and then putting out combat drones is one of the main benefits of using the uh, light drones on the Mac. And they're out right now because chances are the rats, normally the rats will go for the lowest uh, EHP target by default, so that should in almost all cases be the Mac and all. And so if they attack the Mackinac, they'll automatically engage, so we shouldn't even have to really target the rats either. I think having these drones all in their own rocks is going to stabilize everything a lot better. We'll be able to just really kind of relax here. We've uh, started to qu accumulate quite a bit over the course of the past, you know, 10 episodes or so for ore. I'm really going to have to kind of turn up the dial, though, if I want to hit my goal for the end of the month. And my goal is to be like $2 billion in compressed value by the end of this month, which I don't think will be impossible. It's just we're going to have to do a lot more mining than I've been doing, which is why... Um, 
I went ahead and decided to reacquire a porpoise. And also just having these different configurations and depending on how I feel each day, being able to kind of throw together kind of like a commander slash exhumer kind of configuration to make change things up a little bit is really nice. Let's do another survey scan here. We're pretty much on <coughs> condensed scordite and regular Veldspar. few more cycles. I don't run a service scanner on the command ship because I just like having more tank on that and usually there's not a whole lot extra you can put on the zoomer so there's plenty of space for service scanner and most of the time when I'm doing this I'm kind of main screening the, the zoomer anyway. Wanted to go ahead and do a compression pass just to kind of get everything kind of sorted. Mackinac's got about 5 million. We've got about 3 over here, but the drone's really only done like 1.8. Since we had about 2 in there from before. I keep adjusting my window. I just like having my inventory window wide enough so I can see everything in a single row. Let's get another target up. We're just kind of working back down towards where the drones are. Drones still have quite a bit in range. I don't really uh, pull them until... If they have to travel like 10k to mine, then I tend to not try to do that. So they've got quite a bit of rocks left in range to worry about. They would probably already be close to having stuff out of range if we kept the Mac at mid-range. Bites the dust. Hulks will have faster cycle time, but you also have to be very, very conscious of uh, emptying them out or compressing them more often just because of the size of their mining hold. That's one big benefit of. So one big benefit of the Mackinac is you can kind of let it um, chill for a while since it has 44,000 cubic meters. You'd be looking at serious money if you filled this whole thing up with compressed ore, even in high sec ore. Alright, 
see we're starting to see some uh some of the money or the value going up quite a bit since we're not really primarily focusing on scordite we got a lot of plague and pyro coming in so that's good drones will just keep kind of doing their thing It would definitely take a long time to fill up the porpoise with compressed ore. I think we'd actually run out of heavy water before. I think it's actually a good thing. Uh, I've, I've seen some comments of people talking like which is better, the orca or the porpoise, and you know what can, um, how long would it take to fill up both with with ore, compressed ore rather. And that's actually asking the wrong question because with the amount of heavy water you can bring out in both ships, it's not enough heavy water to actually fill up the re each respective ship with compressed ore. You'd almost always have to be uh, resupplied with heavy water, which is a good thing technically, because uh, I've actually done kind of a test and I've taken the orca out when compression first came out and purposely went and tried to f and filled up the orca completely with compressed ore, which was r over a billion in value. It took days, several days to do it and several re um, stock of fuel. Let's get some targets up. All right, everybody's reassigned. Moving quite along, though. We're almost at the 30 minute mark, and we're looking at probably just with the Mac. I mean, we could just technically take the value of the Mac boosted with this setup as the actual value, but I think that we'll probably end up doing like 15 million, most likely. And honestly, most people wouldn't stop at an hour. It's just, I try to make, I want, I want these videos to be pretty lengthy so that, you know, they're entertaining to watch and kind of, um, kind of chill back to, but I think most people going out here and doing this would definitely be out here for much longer than an hour. Porpoise is about four. We've done two on the porpoise and seven over here in the Mac. I don't know. We might hit 20. We've only been running for about 29 minutes, probably mining less than that because we uh, we had to warp out and kind of get it set up. And that took probably about a couple of minutes. So yeah, I think we'll say, uh, we'll just kind of make a guesstimate of maybe 20 million. I feel like that's a pretty good fair assessment. Took about quite a bit in range. That's the benefit of a big rock day is we can get quite a bit of value 
in our first hour without really having to worry about range issues. I consider a 20 million compressed ore value mining op over the course of an hour a pretty big win. But I think to hit my goal, I'm probably going to have to do probably two to three hours with a setup like this a day to get there. Maybe I'll have to run the actual numbers and then get depressed on actually how many hours I'm going to put in for the remainder of the, what we have and for the remainder of the month. As long as we can avoid scordite, we're trying to just take everything, but if we can avoid scordite, we'd uh, definitely do the do better. Putting the mining drones out on the Mac actually would uh, just be the real desperation move. Get another one for the drones and it's Veldspar. They are working one Scordite rock, but there's not a whole lot of Scordite that they're going to be hitting. I see about three or so that they'll eventually get to. We'll let this port fill up a little bit. <clears throat> not worry about compression. I've been mean, compressing quite a uh, bit. Kind of, uh, too much to really be worried about. It's more entertaining to actually <clears throat> fill the exhumer all the way up and then compress it all the way down and see what the actual value turns into being. But as it sits right now, our inventory value is 8.3 in the Mac. And we're going to take 2 off of this, so 2.8 in the porpoise. So we are at 32 minutes for the video and we're roughly 10 million. Another thing I'm probably going to do this weekend is go out and find some ice, put the, uh, do this exact setup, but on ice. Mainly because I already have ice mods and stuff for this Mac, so I don't have to buy anything extra. Probably won't run the ice drone on the Porpoise because it's, um, just painful to watch. Even on the Orca, it's painful to watch. But we'll be able to, I think, a nice goal there would be to try to go for like a thousand units of ice to throw on the pile that would uh that would be pretty interesting another kind of fun thing that i do for myself is uh i usually sort my item hanger by value um so the highest value item is at the top and then um when I'm deciding what to go mine every day, I'll usually take some type of compressed ore that's at the very bottom of that list, and the goal is to mine enough of it to bring it to the top of the list. So it's always kind of like this hopscotch thing, and uh, it's a good way to kind of keep everything kind of balanced. That's our big thing right now, is just the reason we want to come out here and do everything. We want to take, we don't want to just take like Veldspar or Plaid, we want to take everything, because we want to make sure we have a good even spread for all the stuff that we need. We're gonna have to do a good amount of rare ore mining 
and then we're going to have to, uh, unless I go out and just do Spud Main, I'm thinking one of these next few episodes, I will go out and do some Spud Main mining in Poshman because Spud Main is really, really nice. It is, uh, it just has everything in it. It's really great. So we get <coughs> kind of our Noxium and our Isogen from that. And then also going out to there and doing uh, Rackabine, all the Abyssal Ores just helps as well. All right, time to get some Pyro. Drones are still good. I could do low sec mining, but I feel like I'm able to get more volume out of Poshman than actual low sec. Which I know sounds backwards, but... And I know that there are low sec systems out there that exist. that are very, very low populated, low traffic. But I don't know. I just, I really do enjoy Poshman mining. And when I can go out there and get like Spudman and Rackabine and fill up like even the Prospect or the Endurance and then come back with it, it makes me feel very accomplished. It like, it's not, at that point, it's not really about the value of the ore. It's more like the accomplishment of going out to like a known dangerous uh, area of space and filling up, completing an objective and making it back out, which is always nice. We'll go a couple more cycles on the Mac before we uh, kind of throw everything down. If I'm ever able to actually live stream uh, mining and stuff like that at a decent quality, this is probably the format that I'll be going with. Just like this video. It's kind of uh, my goal. And look at that. We have a rat and the hornets are already on top of it. Go and get more targets selected. All right, that rat is dead and we are good to go. Look at that, we got some skill points. I think it's 10K today. All right, uh, rare moon ore processing. Hmm. This character's big uh, focus right now is actually just getting the ability to use all of the mining crystals just so that we have really good options available to us. But like I was saying, my goal ultimately is to do this kind of thing on live stream for several, several hours per session. So I've kind of built my, um, the way I've been like trying to do these uh, soul mining episodes more recently and the way I've kind of configured my UI and things like that are all kind of in preparation for that kind of shift. And that gives me a good opportunity to answer questions kind of in real time and and uh, engage with uh, you guys a little bit better than relying on the comment section of YouTube. So my only drawback right now, the only thing I'm really waiting on before I can kind of go that route is, as you know, yeah, is getting my internet provider to own up to their shadiness and fix their stuff. But that might not be a, a quick... Res resolution. Alright, we can go one more cycle, I think. We're only at 34 of 44. Uh, it's kind of interesting to me, though, and this is kind of more of a meta thing, uh, channel for the, uh, as far as the YouTube channel goes, but I started doing content creation for Diablo 3, um, eight, like eight years ago, and I did primarily that. And then whenever it got to the point where Diablo 3 was very, very much on its way out and I really was playing a lot of EVE Online at the time, I decided to pivot to EVE Online content. And the back then the idea was, hey, I'll just do EVE Online content until Diablo 4 comes out. And then I'll keep, be kind of like back on the whole like Diablo type, you know, content and be the Diablo content creator that I kind of started off as. But now that now that Diablo 4 is out and I've played a considerable amount of it I, 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 last night I did like one 
a guide that I kind of wanted to do, but it's like, I kind of look around now, and it seems to me like, uh, I think I'm just an EVE Online content creator now. I think like the uh, anticipation of Diablo 4 and uh, probably expecting to just kind of like uh, do that uh, like I did Diablo 3. I think uh, my interests have just shifted, you know? And I think that as much as I love to play Diablo and I've, I've done a lot in the Diablo franchise, EVE Online and you guys as a community have done more for me and this channel than... Um, the Diablo community or the Diablo franchise has done as far as historically. So I'm really just kind of enjoying what, uh, what I'm doing now in terms of content because it's enjoyable to me. I'm already out here doing this mining stuff and kind of talking about the things that I enjoy doing and being able to share that and it'd be, uh, I guess, well received or, you know, people enjoy watching it is, is really nice because Diablo, the Diablo community is very, very uh, try hard, as, as it were. I think there's like try hards in every like game community, but the Diablo community is very, very meta, meta strong. Like if you're not doing things in an ex extremely the exact way, if your build is not meta, if you're not doing things, you know, by the book of whoever set, then there's not a whole lot of room for. Uh, I don't know. It's just it's really difficult to actually have fun with that game after a certain point. And obviously, like, Eve's the same way, too. Like, there is uh, obviously a meta in terms of, like, how things should be done in Eve. But I kind of march by the beat of my own drum, regardless of what I, whatever game I'm playing. But I feel like the way that I play Eve is a lot more receptive than the way that I play the Diablo games in terms of what the meta uh, considers good. Ooh, we need a rock for the drones. I don't know. I figure that's something I've been just kind of like. That's kind of an interesting thing I was had in the back of my head for the past few days. I was like, you know, I spent so long waiting for Diablo Four. I was just doing. I thought I was just doing like Eve content, just waiting for Diablo Four to come out. But then now it's like Diablo Four is out, and I'm like, actually, I just enjoy Eve content now, <laughs> which is kind of one of those aha moments, which is fun. Uh, let's compress this and see what we're looking at now. Stackaroo got 5.9. So we'll call it 6. So we'll call it 4. And we got 11 here. So we're at 15 at almost 45 minutes. I think I'm going to I think I'm going to be right. I think we're going to hit 20 million. I know I do this like in every long form mining video that I've done, I'm always sitting here like betting myself like, oh, well, I, you know, <laughs> I think we're going to get this, you know, and it's another one of those things that is fun little mind games to do. And unlike that two hour video we did uh, a few weeks ago, we won't be taking the whole belt, so... I'll leave a, a little bit for the locals, which I guess technically at this point I'm a local now. But as you can tell, the, having the drones operate alongside the Mac is obviously they're not adding a ton in comparison, but it's the it's a little bit extra, you know, it's helping a little bit. It'd also be kind of interesting if we actually ended up hitting 20 million just in the Mac and everything that we've done for drones is just added on top of that, which we could. I mean, that's only like about 9 million more in another 16 minutes. Another thing is interesting too is like letting the uh, Mac fill up and watching these uncompressed stacks kind of move up the list because the higher values on this side. So like 2.8 for this, 250,000 for that, 
and <laughs> letting these stacks move all the way up and then compress them. And obviously all of our uh, BPOs are still researching. We're going to end up uh, researching them max out and have everything good to go. I probably need to select a few more BPOs to start researching as well. We've got, I think, five that we're working on research right now, which is just Venture, um, Tech 1, uh, mining upgrades and lasers and strip miners, stuff like that. But we'll, when we start getting Moongoo and things like that and running, we'll have to run some data relic sites, which this character is set up to do. She'll be able to take the uh, buzzard out and do some combat and data our data sites and relic sites. And we'll start doing invention. And when we start doing that, we'll start actually exploring Tech 2 manufacturing. So we're going to want a bunch of stuff for that. I haven't quite decided what we're going to be manufacturing at the Tech 2 level, but, you know, I'm kind of leaving it open-ended as well. I always found it kind of interesting um, as far as, like, what I've talked about in the past where, like, we do ice mining to get our own heavy water, and that self-fulfillment is really interesting. The other thing that would be really interesting is everything that we technically use in our entire operation, if we're able to manufacture it all, then we are essentially completely self-contained. I think that would be a good goal as well. So getting to the point where we can build Max and we can build porpoises and orcas and things like that. I think orca is probably going to be like, um, it won't be that difficult, but we'll have to, a lot of BPOs and all that stuff go into that kind of thing. But that would be like the ultimate goal for manufacturing. So I might actually just start buying BPOs for all the stuff that we've, we're currently using. And we're talking about like mining charges, the crystals, drones, just everything. If we use it, we built it. <laughs> that could be a very interesting kind of um, ecosystem to experience. I guess we should check on our fuel. We're not using a whole lot. And with how uh, efficient the Mac with Tech 2, our modulated strip miners is, the cost, the war cost worry of heavy water versus yield is non-existent at this point. Especially since we mine ice. We get it as a byproduct. Got a little under 12 minutes to go. After they made all the changes to the mining ships, I do find the Mac to be pretty viable these days. 49,000 EHP with the size of the mining hold and cobbled with a command ship like the Porpoise is just a really good setup. I think I really do want to take this setup out and do uh, ice with it, which we might look into doing for the next episode. I just have to find a a high six system that isn't completely covered in um, crazy people to do that in and by crazy people I mean like the type of people that like to extort miners which we uh last time we did ice in high sake we looked out pretty well even though we only had the Mac out there we uh, ended up doing like 130 units All these little uh, rocks are starting to die here. Which 
Try to get everybody, uh, get all their targets reassigned. Yeah, get that Scordite. About 6.5 on the Porpoise, so about 4.5. But 13, almost 14 here in the Mac. Got some more rats popping, but the Hornets are already on it. That's just another good, good imp, uh, gameplay thing to notice too, is like rats will tend to go with the lowest EHP. So even if you have, it's kind of interesting to know, and I found this out by running multiple mining alts because there was a time where rats would come on grid and they would always attack the same alt. And I was like, why are they always going after this one alt? And I eventually found out that that alt had like the lowest uh, shield skills of all the other ones. So... The, it came to our realization that the weaker target, I'm not sure what the actual metric that the uh, automated system is using for the rats, you know, programming, but basically the alt with the least amount of tank is usually the one that's targeted, and that can usually be remedied by, if you like all your alts have like the exact same skills as far as, and their EHP is all the same, then it could just be a random alt, right? But you can also use this kind of against... Um, you can not use this to your benefit. So if you purposely have one alt that has really high drone skills, but has the lowest um, EHP of all your other alts, you can guarantee that the rats will attack that alt, and then those rats will, or those drones will automatically trigger on those rats. So you don't have to worry about actually kind of retargeting and doing a bunch of crazy stuff. Which is how we've used it in the past, where, because like those rats came on grid, and the horns were already out, and so when they got aggressed, when that character got aggressed, those drones did their thing. We didn't have to drop any targets for drones. We didn't have to drop any targets for uh, rocks to target those guys up and uh, engage. And if you're conscious of how the actual rats target and what um, criteria they use, then you can essentially have an automated uh, rat clearing alt. All right, we got, looks like we got seven minutes left. I don't know. We're gonna have to do some crazy stuff to make that a uh, 20. I usually find myself compressing more and more as we get to the hour mark, just to uh, watch the numbers. 14.4. And over here we got 6.8, so 4.8. Seven. So five over here. We're close. About nineteen right now, with uh, about a little, uh, a little under seven minutes to go. I think we'll be right on the money with uh, what the Mac and the drones are able to do. What I'll do is once we get to like 59 minutes or so, I'll bring the drones in and start getting everything compressed and we'll be coming off grid probably. I'll probably come back out here later or I might actually start, actually no, I'm probably going to start looking for a uh, ice, an ice anomaly to uh, take this setup to, but we'll make sure we get the, uh, the final tally of numbers and everything for you guys. Should have enough space in the fleet hangar now to uh, move everything over to the porpoise, which is where I want everything anyway, because um, whenever the Mac is by itself out there doing like rare ore, then this tune is usually uh, doing logistics stuff, so. We got a few more minutes, though. 
You're probably not as worried about it as I am, because I'm the one that said 20 million. We could probably actually stand, uh, I guess it would be kind of interesting too to like run completely. I mean, we've done it in the past with like, um, I can't remember what video, but we ran all the heavy water out of the porpoise and saw how much, uh, value we had. But with the Mackinac, it'd be kind of interesting to see how much of the Mackinac or hole we could fill with compressed ore by the time we ran out of heavy water on the porpoise. But there's really, we're at like 80, 86, almost 8,700 cubic meters. So we're talking like five or six hours probably out here which you don't have enough heavy water you have like 191 minutes of heavy of siege heavy water on the porpoise so we would definitely have to be uh we want to fill this up we'd have to restock heavy water at some point Alright, 15-4 on the Mac. We've got about a little less than four minutes, a little less than five minutes. We technically were already at 20, right? If you take the Mac and what the drones have done, minus that 2 million. But it would have been fun to actually get 20 million in the Mac. But 15 is good too. Look at me, I'm already starting to justify. I'm already trying to make excuses for my mining alts. Shouldn't have to worry about getting more targets up because we're about done, but eh, we'll get some more targets up just in case. Alright, get those two targets up just in case. The score out that these drones are mining is not helping. And look, we got more drones. And also, if you weren't using um, like an alt with drones, we would our yield would be a lot less because we'd have to pull the mining drones for killing the rats. But this setup works. All right, minute and a half. They spawn so far out too. Like they're actually, and they, they just target disrupted me. Probably not worth getting another uh, set of targets. Got about 45 seconds. I don't think it would matter too much anyway. But we'll finish uh, this cycle. And then you start getting everything cleaned up. We got about 30 seconds. Go and bring in the mining drones. Go and red the bursts and all that stuff. Get everything ready. Start cleaning up here, get this stuff compressed. Alright, 7.8. So 
So about 5.8 there. All right, it's an hour. Let's go and cut these lasers. Get this stuff compressed out. Get it stacked up. Probably should turn on access. Get everything in the uh, porpoise here. We'll be able to get a good number and then minus two. Yeah, we did about three, almost 4,000 cubic meters. I don't know why I said eight before. I think I'm uh, tired. I think I was looking at the porpoise, actually. Oh, it's stacked up. So 24. So we did 22 in an hour. Not a bad, uh, not a bad pool, to be honest. Get everything reloaded and get everybody off grid. I... Hope you guys enjoyed this um, episode. Thank you for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And uh, if you enjoy the content and you want to support the channel and future content, consider becoming a member where you get a membership badge and channel-wide recognition on the watch pages and on the channel homepage. Anyway, until the next time, peace out and take it easy. Fly safe.